la señal de ajustarse los cinturones. Favor guardar debidamente sus aparatos electrónicos de dimensiones grandes. Well, hey there. So, I'm happy to report that I have successfully left Colombia, made my way through Panama City into the USA, and spent one full day. Didn't do much in Miami except to go jogging, and I visited a secondhand store, which was pretty cool, and got autographs from Nancy, Maeve, and Mo, and then it was back to the airport the next day. Doobie doobie doobie. Hey, um, uh, good morning. January 20. Location, Luperon on the north coast of the Dominican Republic. This is not a touristy spot like um, Punta Cana or Puerto Plata, where all the condos are and things like that. Although I may go check those out soon. My location is Luperon, and Luperon is right here. And it's a sailboat hangout, so uh, I'm living on a boat, out in the mooring field, not at anchor technically, but you might as well call it at anchor. I'm staying on a Catalina 31, which is a pretty small sailboat compared to what I have, but I'm enjoying living on a mooring because it's teaching me the finer arts of simplicity. <clears throat> you know, things I don't have to worry about when I'm in Scotland, like fresh water supply, I do have to pay attention to here. So. Uh, today's episode is number 18. Welcome, and I hope you enjoy. We'll take a look around Luperon and see what life is like here. Cheers. Okay, so <clears throat> getting ready to head out for a set of errands. Have to dump trash. Have to buy groceries but I just got some intel from ALF that we're expecting rain today I haven't even turned on the VHF radio to be honest so this window's loose but it, it'll stop rain and I'll make sure I put the hatch over and it's no worries it's not the end of the world but it's good to have that intel I might need to make a habit of getting on the radio every morning maybe catching weather broadcasts and then I'm gonna go groceries and I'm also gonna take the plastic tubs that are in the blue bag back to Yvonne because she made me fruit salad the other day um, and so you see sometimes that's how you gotta tie up your boat because it's not this is not one of those high-end yacht harbors with a beautiful set of cleats and stuff, but it is floating, albeit with not as many pontoons as it should have had. <laughs> and here we are at the government dock in Looper Run. So this guy just got here before me. His boat looks really clean and tidy and mine looks kind of sloppy, but that's because this dinghy that I'm borrowing, the port side pontoon has a leak and I need that pump because I have to fill it <laughs> before every <it for> use. <laughs> so when I get back in a couple hours to head back out to the boat, I'm going to have to pump up the dinghy first. Otherwise, I'll sink on the way. <laughs> no worries. So what I've got here with me is some trash items. My empty jerry can to go fill up with fuel. I've got the two-cycle oil in the boat. And I got me old trusty backpack. I go breakfast first, then gas, then shopping. Don't 
going to it. There's a pharmacy up. Pharmacy. This is a hospital. A fire station. This is a Fedotello. Fedotello. And back at the marina, knock out some laundry. Yeah, you gotta do it by hand. And then I head back out to the boat. Okay, so bottle one, bottle two, bottle three, about 15 gallons of water, my air pump, the two cycle oil, laundry, and my leather bag. It's been a productive little morning. And now we're heading back out to the boat. You gotta load all this stuff on the boat, put all this water in the water tanks. And then, finally just relax and just enjoy a quiet day of not fixing shit and not cleaning stuff. So you're trying to dock on a moving target. You can see the boat's rapidly swinging to port with the wind. That's fine. No problemo. So I think step one should be tie up the boat. I'm doing that right here. Oh my god. That just won't do. So part of the deal when you stay on a boat for free is you help do work, make it better. Oh, baby. In this case, we're trying to restore at least minimal electric power yeah, to the there boat. There should be two batteries, but we only can find one here in town. <laughs> the basic problem is that the solar panels, although they're making okay. 33 Good volts idea. during sunlight, aren't okay, charging the batteries. The silver thing. This camera's going upside down. So that's what it looks like. The jumper in the bottom is not normal. I learned that trick from a gentleman named Elf from uh, New Zealand. She just bypassed the controller. That's the terminal on this side is the incoming positive from the solar panel. The one on this side is supposed to be going to the battery. And this thing, I think, is just not working right. I mean, the battery was just going down, down, down. Yeah, so Renogy, I thought, was one of the reputable makers. And damned if I know how... I guess the problem is not so much Renogy, perhaps, it's just uh, we don't know how it was installed. That's the problem. You know, when you inherit an old boat, it's just like anybody's friggin' guess as to what's connected to what. It was the same way on Bionic Gypsy, which is a boat way out there, pink boat. And aside from getting the batteries going, I do a lot of cleaning too. You guys know I'm a clean freak, and I had to clean up the boat. Put up to dry. Probably they'll drain slash dry today. Yeah, so yesterday I completely scrubbed out the head. Doesn't smell anymore. That toilet, ladies and gentlemen, was so gross when I got here. It was fuller than that, more full, and it was brown, and it smelled to high heaven, and there were little creatures growing in it. Little wormy looking things. Maggots, I guess. So that's part of the deal when you stay in a boat for free. You're not obligated to try to fix AC outlets like that. I'm just not going to go there. That's for the new owner to do when this boat finally sells.
Yeah, we got the fridge and the ice box cleaned out. And they're just drying. I've got the And I've got the uh, lids propped open with the local orange soda and with my bottle of rum. So you tell me what the worst case scenario is here. <laughs> I think it's a no-brainer. It's the only two pans I have, and I had to buy the round one. Um, this boat is pretty minimally stocked, or should I say it probably got picked clean by other cruisers or locals. I don't know who. People who knew that the boat was idle, and they just came aboard to see what was worth taking. Either way, this is how I'm making my tea, which is job number one every day, of course. That's how we do dishes. Salt water first, fresh water rinse. Well, I love doing dishes and scrubbing shitters, of course, but I went off to go explore the island and I found my new favorite spot. I don't know about you, but I think if I fall down out there, it's gonna friggin' hurt. I'm still in the little dinghy. The wind is behind me, well behind the camera here, so it should be blowing me this direction toward the mooring field. I definitely am heading that way. What do you say, bird? Which way am I going? Why am I doing this? A lot of it is because there's a lot of folks out there who can't. A lot of Navy nukes out there, retired nuclear workers, maybe they've lost some of the health that they've had as a youth. And I still retain good health, so I'm very thankful to have this opportunity and to be in such a beautiful place. So I've got health and I've got freedom. And, you know, and there's, there's really not that much more you can ask for. As a young person, you have different ambitions. You want things like cars and stereos. And remember, you guys from um, class 8203, I mean, <laughs> we collected cassette tapes and we bought car stereos and we bought so much absolute shit, shit as, it, as we look back on it now. And as we get older, I believe most of us recognize that the real treats and the real treasures are, are uh, good health, freedom, family, friends, and, and not much more. So, I'm a lucky dude. I'm a lucky guy. I'm very pleased. I'm very blessed. I'm mostly pleased that I'm aware that I'm blessed. And I, I'm grateful to have good health 
and freedom and to have a bottle of rum waiting for me on the boat. So. Gonna be all right. So, just trying not to crash. So, thank you for watching, guys. Take care, everyone. That is the ugliest Jeep wannabe I've ever seen. Yeah, this is gonna be kind of hard to do. Yeah, so the big picture is you hope that other people who tied off did not make it impossible for me to get my line off. And it looks as though they did. They passed this goddamn thing through the loop so I can't get out. Well, fuck me. Shit.